Santi are real and they're coming. Welcome back. This is Sean's Take. My name is Sean Redman. I am your host. Uh, and today we're talking about th the three body problem, episode four, entitled Our Lord. We touched on that uh, in the previous episode. If you haven't seen my review or discussion of episode three, I'll put that right about there. You can check that out and then come back and watch this one. This is episode four, Our Lord. This is your spoiler warning. From here on out, I'll assume you've seen the episode or don't care if I ruin it. We'll be using some clips from the show as is allowed under the fair use provision of the copyright laws of 1976. All right, let's get into it. So we actually start in a different year. We go back to 1982 in London. We had been going back to the 60s and early 70s. Well, I don't know that we actually did any of the early 70s. But now we're in 1982, London. And um, Wenji, who's a little bit older now, meets up with Mike Evans. Um, you know, and even though they said she would never be able to leave her job at the uh, installation with the ear, the listening post or whatever we want to call it, the counter-revolution party ended when Mao Zedong died in 1976. We don't know when she got out, but... You know, sometime probably after that. So she decided when she got out to follow in her father's footsteps and become a professor. Remember, it was her father that was put to death by the counter-revolutionaries uh, for being a scientist, teacher, professor. And it's been about five years since the wow signal, right? Which is when Wenji... Let's cover that for just... Because I'm hearing so many people refer to her as Yi... Her family name, her surname is Yi. Her given name is Wenji, and she named her daughter Vera. So Yi Wenji in China coming to America becomes Wendy Yi, Wenji Yi, and her daughter is Vera Yi. If Vera Yi went to live in China, she would be Yi Vera, okay? Um, it really does bother me when people... Anyway, so... Where are we? So Mike Evans has become very wealthy as he's taken over his father's energy company. So she tells him her secret, that she heard the signal and responded. It's a very brave thing to do. And trusting for somebody who was saving birds and is now running an oil company. Uh, so let's... Uh, and then we cut to... And they're having a very nice meeting. They seem to be enjoying themselves or comfortable with each other. Let's put it that way. We cut to Will, who is um, ready to be discharged after his operation. And he's waiting for Jack. And he's texting him and he's calling him. And Jack's, of course, not answering because we know Jack's dead. But he does not yet know this. And this poor guy can't catch a break. He didn't get the girl. He has cancer. And his best friend's now dead. And poor Saul shows up and he's going to have to be the one to tell him. So Clarence and his People are planning on how to support Jin in her next meeting in London. You know, she, she got through the original vetting and went and is going to the summit. We don't know what summit means, but we're, we're going there. And Jin, you know, never hesitated. She never wavered. You know, she never thought about actually joining them. You know, it was always, as far as we know, she was always going to be the plant, the inside person. Which is nice that there's a character of that kind of fortitude. So we go out to the boat. They got a ping, uh, you know, where Mike Evans actually is. And they finally found him. And he's on board a tanker in the Mediterranean Sea. A tanker that hasn't delivered oil in like 40 years or 45 years or something. Um, and it has a big dish on the front top of it. And it's called Judgment Day is the name of the boat. And obviously with that dish on the top of it, Wenji was clear about how to talk to aliens. Um, they've been indoctrinating people. There's a lot of people living on that boat. Um, and there there might be some parallels to the Red Guard from China in the 60s. You know, we're not seeing the beating to death of people, but you know, they've killed people. So Mike goes back to talk to the Santi over the intercom, the squawk box, um, and refers to that Santi as my lord. And they do believe that the Sancti will protect them no matter what they do. That nobody can hurt them because the Sancti are watching. I'm not, again, uh, we talked about it at the end of the last episode. I'm not sure how that happens when they're not here yet. Now, how are they exercising so much control and they're not here yet? So Mike continues to talk. And what he's doing is he's reading children's stories to them 
to teach them, I assume, the way we teach children, um, right from wrong, good from bad, uh, truth from lies. It's not a bad way, I think, but they don't get it. The Santi don't understand. They don't understand what lying is. Because apparently the Santi communicate, I guess they can communicate through speech, but they can also communicate through a form of telepathy. So there is no deception. So they can't lie. And it bothers them that that's possible. And then they, you know, there's a question about whether or not they're afraid. And as a species, they share fear where it seems that humans don't have any fear because they reached out to another planet. And Mike says, well, some people are fearless. Others do have fear. And the Santi says, the human race is going to have to learn fear again. That's ominous. They continue to talk about, you know, the little red riding hood wolf lying about being the grandmother and the Santi don't understand what lying is and become very concerned that the human race are liars. And that's sort of where we leave that conversation. It was a weird kind of ending too. Like they're, they're really, the Santi are taken aback. We get to Jin's summit in London and, you know, everybody's there. It's a nice affair. And they say, the rumors are true. Our founder is here. And we see Clarence and his boss talking and said, how do you get off the boat? Said, how they erase from the tape? We don't know. Um, and they introduce the founder and the doors open and in walks Wenji. Wenji Yi, of course. So she was the first to communicate and she and Mike Evans, you know, she with Mike Evans money created this group. We won't call them a cult quite yet, but probably a cult. So even though the Senji are Sangti are hundreds, if not thousands of years more advanced than we are, it's still going to take them 400 years to get here. And we're going to greet them when they do. So they send in, um, Clarence and his men are sent in and they arrest everybody, which is interesting because um, I'm not sure what they can prove they did wrong to warrant breaking into a meeting. They arrest everybody and, you know, Wenji says, no, if the Far Lord wished to stop it, it would stop. This is what they want. You know, sit down, relax. But then Tatiana um, sees Jin being treated differently and starts shooting. So a lot of people get killed. A lot of people get killed. Tatiana gets shot, but crawls away. Very impressively crawls away. Crawls away a great deal. Not sure where she's headed. That's one of the last things we see is her crawling through a field away. Um, and we flash back to when Mike Evans first showed Wenji the boat, the ship. Um, you know, the computers were there. There was all this. And they kiss. So that probably brings us to Mike Evans is Vera's dad. Um, now, I thought Vera would be older than being born in 82 or 83. But... I apologize to that actress. Um, so Wenji's in custody. So the Sancti are coming for 400 years, so not necessarily an imminent threat. But, and, you know, the Wenji and Mike Evans' organization is trying to educate the next generation and equip them with the tools to fix our society and our planet before they get here. That's not a bad thing. You know, but getting back to the original message, that person said... I'm a pacifist. If you respond to this, you'll be conquered. Uh, and we responded to it. And Wenji responded to it. So these, it, it doesn't seem congruent with that, that they want to learn and they are surprised. And this, you know, I think they're, they're just learning about their enemy. I, I would say, now I haven't read the books. I haven't watched other series or anything. I haven't watched ahead. So I'm not sure. Uh, but I would say that this species intends to show up here and remove the infestation of humans and then just live on a planet that's stable. What do you think? Um, so that's it for episode four. I'll be back in another day or two with episode five. Uh, let me know what you're thinking of the Three Body Problem show, what you think of my show. Uh, give us a like, uh, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when these drop. Um, but that's it for today. Appreciate you being here. See you next time.